Welcome to Ship Flow Border Say, the podcast. I'm your host and team captain at CCI Sports, Matt East, and we're going to be chatting with flowboarding pros, both OGs and newcomers. So join us for exclusive insights into their stories and experiences, whether you're a seasoned rider or just curious. This is your backstage pass to the exciting world of flowboarding. Our first guest is Scott Callens, aka Flow Daddy, the current world champion on Pro Men's Stand Up. So let's talk some shit on shit flowboarders say. Kick the intro. Welcome to the first episode, episode one, shit flowboarders say, with our featured guest, Scott Callens. Scott Callens, what's up, man? How's it going, dude? Glad you joined us today. Thanks Um, for having me. Appreciate y'all. Came to hang out and talk some shit um, on shit flowboarders say. Always, always down to talk some shit. So cool. Well, I'm glad you joined us today. First question I ask all my guests is what's your favorite trick? My favorite trick, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, for sure the front foot impossible. Like, I know it's lame because it's like the one that everyone like expects me to like think is my yeah, favorite trick. Yeah, everybody but, wants you to do it. Yeah, yeah everyone wants me to do cool, it. But, it's the cool but trick. it is. It's fun to do. It's fun when you land it. Um, definitely my favorite trick for sure. Front foot impossible. Right on. I yeah. mean, I think that's one of my favorite. It's definitely in the top of my list. So let's go back to, uh, you know, the beginning of Scott Callens. Where'd you start? Where are you from? Um, originally, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, and that's where I started flowboarding. Uh, nice. Aqua Shop, a place that no longer exists. Right that on. tore down the wave. I remember Aqua Shop. Yeah, there was one in Florida. Which I think you wrote at, or the other uh, Aquashop, or no? No, there was an Adrenalina. Oh, Adrenalina, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah it used yeah. to be Adrenalina, and then it turned into Aqua Shop. Um, but yeah, I never actually worked there while it was Aqua Shop. Um, I think I actually wrote it. Adrenalina? While it was, oh yeah, Adrenalina. I never uh, worked at the Rwanda's Adrenalina, but I actually went and wrote it once. It's crazy. Um, before I even did flowboarding or anything, I was like 16. I went like with my family. And it was there, and I literally remember uh, like Alyssa, or what's her name, uh, the hype girl. Uh, oh, Alyssa Mize. Yeah. yeah, she literally, bro, like helped me before. I, like I like, and it was literally her as the instructor. And I'm pretty sure it was Adrenalina then. Which oh, is just wow. crazy. Yeah, right on. yeah, that's I, crazy. I just remember that. But yeah, and then Old school. Yeah, and then later I got a job there. But yeah, that was I started there at Aqua Shop in Dallas. When did you start at Aqua Shop in Dallas? What year? Um, How old I, were you? So I started. Uh, I was 18. Um, I'm 29 now, so it was 11 years ago. So whatever year that was, I don't even remember. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was 18. I literally got a job there because I thought it was super cool. Like, and I remember writing it like two years or three years before when I was 15 or 16. Um, so I went and applied. And so then, you rode for three, two, three years first, and then got a job. No, no, no. I literally had just ridden that one time, and then oh, when I was gotcha. 18, I had been doing like cheer and other stuff, and I want, I needed another job for more money. And I remember that place, and I was super active them doing cheer and everything. So I was like, I'll just go work at that surfing place if they'll hire me, you know? Right. Um, and they literally hired me, and yeah, just put me on as an instructor and started teaching me, and I literally fell in love with it and just started, yeah, trying to learn as fast as I could. Um, but yeah, I literally just remembered it from like trying it like like two years before that. And I was like, yeah, I just want to get a job there. And it worked out just like that. Right, and now it's right. like my life, which is crazy. But, right. Yeah. I think most writers tend to, if they get dedicated, they they tend to want to work at some of the venues, just get a little bit more time. It's, yeah, it gives you more time. It's yeah. the easiest way to get more ride time for sure. Right on. Um, so let's go back before that. Um, did you play any sports growing up, like in school? Yeah, I mean, I did, like, football in middle school. I actually did wrestling for, like, a year in high school. Oh, yeah, you wrestled? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it wasn't that fun, but I did it. <laughs> um, yeah, for only a year. And then I did choir. I sang for a while. And then I did competitive cheer, which wasn't in the school system, but... You had choir um, in school? Or was it chorus? Chorus? Or what? Chorus? Was it chorus or choir? Ooh, choir. What? It was choir. Is it choir... Is it choir... Uh, uh, church, no. church choir, or is it called? What's is it, it called? Chorus? Because I was a part of in chorus. school. And, oh, it was called chorus. I was a no. part of in chorus high school. In what's school. the what's the singing chorus in high school? I can, I can Google, that. Yeah, <laughs> Google it. Like do it, do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, this is good. Um, I, that's, there's no, it's just choir, right? Or no, is it not? I mean, you're, I'm pr- you're probably I'm out of it, right? <laughs> but no, I mean, the, the, only si- reason the singing I class, class, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only reason I say that is because I was in chorus in middle got school. You, got you. And, uh, no, yeah, I did that. I played yeah, a lot of instruments. Sang, and, yeah, I enjoyed know. the singing and playing instruments. Um, did yeah, you so play in band? No, in I didn't school. play. I didn't play in band. Yeah, I didn't. I don't. I didn't enjoy like the, the formality and like doing all that stuff. I I played drums. I was more grungy. You know, I wanted to do my own thing. But, oh right on. Yeah. So a choir refers to a group of singers, but a chorus includes dancing and acting. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I'm pretty sure oh, it's not choir. That was my bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm good. I'm pretty. Did not know that. But yeah, you know, choir, I was yeah. also in the church choir growing up. So. Were you in a chorus? You dance uh, and sing and move around? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did. I had a solo and everything. I do. I hope we have a video song. for that, please. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> think we have a video that far back. <laughs> it pops up the map. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, no. That was good. That was good. Um, Sorry, did I answer the question? I didn't even know. So, <laughs> so you played sports growing up? Uh, yeah, did, yeah, I did. A, you did some wrestling. A couple, yeah, but did more musical stuff, did I guess. More for musical, the, yeah. For the most part, yeah. So And, and then and, cheer. So. And then cheer, right? So how long did you do cheer? cheer um, since, like, it was right, uh, right around the same time, like, when I was 17 or 18, like, right around when I started flowboarding. But I only did it for two or three years, but I did it very... Seriously and competitively, like almost like I took that more seriously than flowboarding at the start. I right. I was doing that more. Um, so yeah, like every day I was going to the gym, putting in hours. Um, yeah, I was on a super competitive team. We did super well. Went you know to like that the world championships and that you know and everything. Oh wow, well, really? Yeah, we got. What'd you play? Second. Second in yeah, the world. Yeah, second uh, in the world on the division. cheer athletics cheetahs. Yeah, shout out to my cheerleaders. <laughs> y'all know the y'all know the squad. Um, we were good. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed cheerleading. Uh, I still enjoy watching and stuff sometimes. Got some videos on YouTube. Don't look that up. Stuck <laughs> in but anyways, yeah. Yeah, I've seen sure. a couple of those back in the day. Yeah, people for like sure. to pull those up sometimes. For I don't know why. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, take that down. Yeah, take, yeah, down that take down the video. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta start bringing that up. So you found flowboarding when you're about 18, right? And. Uh, Basically, you started working there pretty much right af- right there after. Yeah, the Aqua Shop. Um, at Aqua Shop. When did you actually start competing um, in flowboarding? I think my first competition, well, we had like a little local competition, you know, at the actual way. But like the first competition I think I went to was um, San Antonio Hill Country, Hill Country the Hyatt. Hyatt. Um, Hopefully I was there. Be a full video of that. It's actually a super dope venue with the laser and just like everything. I actually really like that. I went there as a kid, like crazy, with my family, like several times. So it was crazy oh, when they built the flow rider. Yeah, wow. when they built the flow rider, I, I didn't know because it had been so long. Um, but they built a flow rider, and I couldn't believe. Yeah, and so going there was really cool. Um, but that contest, I'm pretty sure. Uh, what year would that be? Uh, actually, I actually, I actually know that year was it was 2000. 14 I'm pretty sure that that was the, the, the first, first highest. One. Yeah, yeah, and that's where I met you I'm pretty sure yeah, I believe so and the first time I saw Sean Silver I remember seeing him He was on the wave when I was walking by I was like thought he was a god back then <laughs> um, Shout out Sean. Yeah, I uh, think everybody looked up to him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah around for that sure. time for sure Just uh, the style master and uh, Yeah, the most you know consistent rider. I think yeah no it was yeah his style was out of the league back then it was crazy yeah watching that and seeing that for the first time and then meeting you and yeah I'm forgetting who else like well Adam but I don't really remember meeting him but he has crazy a great story from the high hill country he always likes to tell how he beat me at my first contest uh, oh yeah that was at Hyatt yeah I'm pretty sure that's that year the first year yeah he does that's yeah funny. I got like second in amateur in the division I was in it's because Adam <laughs> was competing and beat That's me funny. with a three shove foot plan on the nut. He'll never let it go. <laughs> never let it go. I'm pretty sure it was that. He was out of here. But yeah, it was one of. But yeah, he beat me and yeah. But yeah, the high hill country that year, 2014, was my first contest. It was 2023. So I was my first contest was nine years ago now. Oh, nine years ago. Yeah, I think that yeah. was about around the same time I started to. Well, well, going back to that year, we were talking about Sean and. Um, great riders. Can you name a few of the riders that have most influenced you in flowboarding? For sure. Um, 
I mean, for sure, like, I, I, mean, I mean, always remember looking at Sean, you know, way back in the day, just his style and his tricks. But more recently, I mean, Taylor Hales, I've always looked up to his writing, really All enjoy. his switch, yeah. Switch, his pop, just everything. He's super technical. He yeah, does, sure. like, yeah, he just rides super clean, super technical. He just is a super good rider, yeah. Um, Taylor Hales, for sure. Um I mean Chuck Wright always doing all the front side stuff like the front um the big heel like that shit always amazed me I remember looking back in the day and he was just he for, for me he was like ahead of the game too doing like some some of that stuff anybody doing. that influenced you around you maybe at like aqua shop back in Dallas yeah I mean there was there was a couple of riders that started like riding around the same time as me and we kind of like got good together I mean Nick went actually worked Shout out Nick Wynn, um, mm -hmm. worked at the Adrenalino before it was there. And so he, had, he it was like three years before that when he had last worked there. And so people always talked about Nick Wynn because he was like a champion at that point on bodyboard or like becoming it. And he could like barely flip on the sandboard and do way more than anybody. Um, so everyone always talked about him. And so he was like, he, was, he wasn't he was there like influenced me, but he was, always, he was always talked about like, you know, like Nick rode this wave and Nick could do this on this wave. So that was a motivation kind of coming up knowing that Nick had rode in that wave and like what he had kind of done, um, you know, already right. set the pace and it did motivate me. I was like, oh, so the, this stuff is possible, even though I didn't like see it, you know, I was like, Nick literally did it here on this wave. Like I know, right. I, I know I could, it was possible to learn it here. And I'm sure you've seen uh, a bunch of his Flowrider Bros videos. Yeah. At yeah. That same, at that same time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nick Loon and the Bros. Yeah. 13 ROs. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. watching all that for sure watching all those old videos. I mean, there weren't many, but yeah, because that was yeah, more bodyboarding. Sure. But then, yeah, the main, the, honestly, uh, the Sean, um, f f forgot what the video's called now. It's like, lose your mind or- Open like, your mind. Open your mind, yeah. yeah. We would just watch that on repeat because it was the only uh, the only flowboarding video that like was so high quality and slow-mo and like, you know, at the time, where right. you could like watch up close like what he was doing. So we watched that a lot for sure to get uh, inspiration and kind of like learn how to do those tricks. That was like right. the main one for stand up people at least. But yeah, Nick went for all the bodyboard. And there is a lot of bodyboard a lot of bodyboards came out of that wave. I was I mean there were there was a good amount of stand up riders too, but bodyboarding was huge and so like there was a lot of bodyboarders for sure on that. Right. Wave. I mean being in Texas and a, you know, yeah, all those waves. Bodyboarding that there yeah. Like curl for sure. There was a lot of bodyboarding going down. Yeah. Shout out Texas, to all the H dub guys. So, if right anyone on. watching. Well cool. So you were working at Aqua Shop. You were starting to come up and starting to become good with your riding and feel um, comfortable with your riding and contests. I wanted to ask you, when did you decide to ride in the pro category? And what made you decide to take that leap into the next division? That's a good question. Like, when did I first like compete in the pro category? Because yeah, at the Hyatt Hill Country I did and I did amateur. There was, it was sometime pretty soon after within, I probably did maybe a couple more contests and then I tried to compete in pro. I still competed in amateur. I didn't like make the full leap and say like, I'm not competing in amateur. Um, and I started competing in amateur and pro. Um, but like the, uh, and so like, I'm pretty sure I competed in both for a while, but it took me, it must've been like 2015 until I did like a first pro contest. And then um, maybe that year or maybe the next year I took money and I think they said once you take money in pro back then and it might be the same now, I forget how it goes, um, that I couldn't compete in amateur anymore. So I think around that time, like 2015, 2016, I made like the final transition like just into pro. Right. Um, but honestly, I don't know, I feel like an old man, I'm 29, but it's hard to remember like thinking back exactly. But uh, I think it was right around then, like 2015, 2016, which... It was crazy thinking back because I, I I didn't even think I was that good back. <laughs> so I should I shouldn't have been going full pro, but I wanted the money. You know, it's like and, and, right. and to accept the money that means like, you're gonna keep being pro. And so I was like, let's do it. Um, but yeah, right around then, 2015, 2016. So when you when you uh, were riding in a pro category and um, you said that you didn't you if you took the money you'd have to leave amateur. When did you finally take the money and was that your first time getting on the pro podium uh, in a pro contest? I think so. I think, cause yeah, 2015, now that I remember, 2015, I think that was the year that I traveled, I, I went to like every stop and back then they did like 14 or 15 stops like including pro and amateur, but you could like get points up. But it was, it was complicated back then, I feel like it was different. Mm -hmm. But I literally traveled in my car with the homies Gage and Babyface, and we went everywhere to every stop. Um, 
Wait, what was the question again? I got I lost, sorry, I lost my train of thought as I was talking about every time. I started thinking about like literally traveling in my car. 2015, yeah, yeah, and I finally took money. It had to be that year because I was traveling to every stop. So I finally think I podiumed them. So I think like a lot of that times that year, I think I was doing well in amateur and I was getting close, you know, to podium. Right. And then finally at one of those stops, um, I podiumed them and said, you know, taking the money for sure. Um, yeah, it was that year, because yeah, it was the 2015, 2016 year, that, and then that was the Pappy bus year, and basically like we went to every stop, and Pappy was going to every stop with all, all the people on the bus, yeah. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure it was that year that I went like, yeah, full pro, so, like, like 2015, right 2015, 2016, you made the leap into the pro category. Yeah. Right on. No so, longer competed in riding about nine-ish years in the pro category. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. To, yeah. Eight, nine. Right. I mean, eight. Yeah. I'm still young. Is I got plenty of time. Is no, my so, no, 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 he's right, you know, but. Uh, four. No, seven. You know? Seven. 16 to 23. My come 24. up was fast. I've been pro yeah. two years. Seven, <laughs> eight years. All right, it's been seven years. <laughs> We're going the lower side. <laughs> <laughs> you, you made pro um, 2016, uh, started making money doing it, and from then on out, you've competed in a lot of contests, right? Yeah. What would be your favorite contest memory? Out of all the years that you've competed, out of all the times you've gone to different venues, does one stand out specifically that really sticks with you? It, it could be, you know, you uh, riding or, you know, just hanging out with friends and um, different venues, you know? Yeah, I mean, as you said that, I mean, uh, I don't know why this memory came to mind. It was just like, it's like a good memory because it was just funny, but I remember that it was a comp in Vegas one year. Um, and on the Vegas comp, it's literally on the fifth floor of Planet Hollywood, which probably looks Sean know. Hopefully we got a picture of the Planet Hollywood wave right here. It's really cool. Um, and they literally had blackjack tables right beside the wave and I'm, and I'm Brad Spencer really loves blackjack and I'm chatting with him which at the time like literally is like an idol and he's like a world champion and he's like come over here like I really like blackjack like I'll, I'll sit and play with you and like and we're sitting and playing and I literally win like three hundred dollars or something in a matter of like ten minutes oh on the pool deck yeah right there but also right like my fun. heat was coming up and they're literally like shouting like Scott Scott or whatever so like then we run over and I, I I'm pretty sure I did like pretty well I didn't win but I did like I made it through the heat and did well in the contest but it was such a cool feeling because I was like I got to play blackjack with Brad Spencer and then like go immediately compete right there and it's just like wild like like you don't ever get to do that you know like play blackjack, blackjack with, with and, Brad Spencer and then, and then yeah. immediately go compete yeah and have a good time sure. um but that's only in Vegas of course on that way which is absolutely cool um, Vegas but, is definitely a different world, and um, yeah. the flow rider up there is definitely no exception. Yeah, um, that's definitely a good memory for sure. Yeah. All right, so that's a great story. Vegas, Vegas is all always good times there. Brad Spencer, um, shout out Brad Spencer. Yeah, Brad. Would it be somebody yeah. helping me out? Right on. Yeah, uh, I personally like Vegas a lot. That was uh, my home wave for a good few years. So that was. My next question for you is, um, what board do you ride, and can you explain what you like about your board personally? I know you've had a little bit of transitional uh, things happen uh, in the past few weeks, so you want to go ahead and yeah. give a little bit more info about that? Yeah, for sure. I currently and am going to ride for Aqua Flow Boards, um, which is Winfield, Austin, great guy. Um, I did just leave Mac Flow Boards, which is Jeremy, amazing guy, amazing boards, nothing bad to say, literally love. Shout out Jeremy. Yeah, shout out Jeremy. I literally love, love the guy and love everything about his boards and everything. But yeah, I currently ride for Aquaflow and uh, I'm actually having a board made right now. So I tested out a bunch of different boards and kind of felt out what I liked. Um, but the size I ride is right around 41 inch, 40 and a half to 41 inch is normally the size I like. Um, and normally I like a stub nose board, but currently I think with Aquaflow, I think I'm going to go with a little pointier nose. Um, but yeah, once I get that board in, I think I'll be able to talk about it a little more. I think the graphic is coming up actually on the Aquaflow website. Go check that out. My new pro model with him. Um, but yeah, so I'll be getting that board soon. I'll be able to talk about that soon. There's a lot of stuff in the works with Aquaflow, but yeah. Well, be cool. Good. So it's you tested be... a bunch of boards. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got a. I just went down to Florida. Yeah, I met with him. I saw the Newmans. Yeah, it was great riding with all them. Shout out. Yeah, the Margaritaville Bill, uh, Sarah, um, 
all the guys there are amazing. But yeah, I just Pretty met much with the Aquaflow team. The whole Aquaflow yeah. team. Yeah, I got to yeah, yeah, they yeah, we did the rounds down there, got to ride all the waves and yeah, I was super appreciative of that and ride a bunch of different boards um, and test them all out. But yeah, so we put one together. We're refining it. Um, but yeah, it'll be out soon. And you yeah, if you go on the website, it'll probably already be out by the time this is out. You'll be able to see all the details, the length, the dimensions and everything. So you'll be able to get all the details on that aquaflow.com. I think that's what it's like. Hopefully, we'll post it right here. Right here. The website yeah. will be right here. It's yeah. aquaflowboards.com. We'll be good. Okay. Right on. Well, cool. Um, that's a, definitely a big transition and uh, yeah. big change. Um, for sure. And especially considering the fact that you've been on the Mac flowboard team for it's like seven uh, seven years. I think, seven or years. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, 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 shout, out, shout out Mac. Yeah, great guy, great board. Right on. Yep. Yeah. Um, so a big transition. So yeah, I'd be interested to see what your new pro model comes out like and uh how it rides and how you like it so uh we'll be looking forward to seeing that in the future um and so speaking about boards and gear um do you have anything that you personally like to ride in uh i know some riders ride with shoes um i personally prefer no shoes um, but everybody has their own yeah. uh, preference, Nate Murray in you shoes. know, Nate Murray. <laughs> um, but yeah, do you, is there something specific you like to ride in? Um, board shorts? Um, yeah, I mean. Jerseys, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I like board shorts. I don't like shoes. I ride board shorts always above the knee for sure, especially if I'm competing always. So shorter board shorts. I don't Why? care how short. They can come Why really short. Why do you wear short. them above the knee? Uh, so don't, it doesn't grab or drag in there, or I don't even have to think about it or feel it. It's just less feel on my leg too because I'm bending down, slipping a little popping. It's just like if it's higher, if the less clothing, the less you feel, the less you got to worry about. Um, Makes sense. So yeah, just above the knee for sure, but even shorter, I don't even care. I can show the whole thigh. <laughs> um, and then I always wear boxers. I mean, for sure, just to keep, you know, that water be tugging, you know, you never, <laughs> I mean, even though you tie them, you know, you got to be secure. Um, so to make so sure always, in case nothing yeah, comes yeah. out. Boxers, board shorts, shorts to come board shorts above the knee, no shoes. Don't like wearing a shirt ever unless it's cold. Um, yeah. So I, I just, yeah, ride pretty pretty much naked. No, I don't know. Boards, <laughs> boards, 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 boards. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Probably no, no, not no, a no. good idea to be yeah, doing yeah, that. No, no, or, don't or ever do that. Don't ever do that. The yeah. flow riders. Less than yeah. one. No, I'm just playing. Never done. Never done. Never done. Never done. Never done. We got to hear that story. Yeah, that's, that's not a story. <laughs> Um, oh, cool. So, pretty much just trying to board shorts, uh, skin it out there, make sure you, like, I guess, stay as light as possible and just yeah. be able to be as nimble as possible. Yeah. So, always put up my hair, hair tie, too. I guess that's an accessory, but always a hair tie. Gotta keep my hair up. I, yeah, don't, do, I don't do a hat. I know Matt does the hats, but. Yeah, always. I mean, if the there's a hat sponsor face. out there that wants to, you know, <laughs> I mean, I will wear a hat. I'm He's like, looking for a hat sponsor. But, yeah, um, hair tie for sure. But, yeah, that's right it. Yeah. Right on. Um, well, speaking of sponsors, do you have any sponsors um, that you'd like to shout out? Um, I do. CCI Sports, for sure, has always been there since day one. I met Eric so long ago, like like seven years ago, or maybe even eight now. Um, crazy long time ago. Eric and Mulaney. Eric Mulaney, yeah, of uh, CCI Sports. Him and Claire are amazing. Yeah, Shout out to y'all. Absolutely. You all. Um, he has he has done worlds for me. Um, um, yeah, helping me just everything in, in uh, flowboarding. Um, so I can't thank him enough. He's been number one for sure. Um, and then Aquaflow, of course, my sponsor for boards. Shout out to him. Um, he's great and makes great boards. Everyone go check him out. Um, Craig from my wave, no one's gonna know this, but another guy that's helped me out a little bit. I always got to shout out Craig because he's he's always um, actually you know helped me um, too. Appreciate Craig. Um, yeah, Craig, I know Craig. He's yeah. a great good guy. guy, funny guy. He's helped me out. Um, but as far as sponsors, um, I don't really have any others. Um, so yeah, I was looking for those. <laughs> <laughs> right on, your current world champion right here. Flow Co Apparel that made this shirt. Yeah, shout out Flow Co Apparel um, for making this beautiful Flow Daddy shirt. Appreciate that. On flowcoapparel.com, you can get your Flow Daddy shirt uh, just like Flow Daddy here. Um, CCI Sports also has a full line from all their pros, or we have uh, club members only shirts just for our club members so go check out flowcoapparel.com um those guys will hook you up with some sick uh 
threads that you can rock down to your wave and uh, show out for you know the flowboarding community. So uh, make sure to check that out for sure. I'd like to ask you, Scott, uh, I know you've landed a ton of tricks in the day. I've personally seen some pretty wild tricks that you've thrown that I didn't even comprehend at the time and couldn't even fathom uh, how they were possible, but you managed to make them look you know, effortless and easy, um, which I know these tricks are definitely not. Um, can you tell me what was the most frustrating trick that you've ever landed and um, maybe a little bit of backstory behind it and how long it might have took? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I guess I'll go two separate ways here. For sure, the front foot possible is the, the hardest trick that I've, because I've tried to get it consistent. So there's, right. I guess there's harder tricks I've landed, but I never tried to get it. So, so the front foot impossible, I've grinded for like three years now, and it's finally getting pretty consistent. Um, so as, as far as like time wise, that has like taken me so long to like get consistent and you know um, good. So for sure, that's been like the hardest trick I've had to learn as far as time wise and hardness. But difficulty of a trick. Um, I did a uh, back shove and then back foot or late foot um, inward heel flip, uh, which was insane. I did uh -huh. it once and then I, I was filming a part, uh, the part that Jay made an edit. Shout the out Into that. the Darkness. The Into the Darkness On part. The CCI Shout out Sports, that. Yeah, hopefully we get a clip uh, of that YouTube up here. channel. Um, but yeah, in that, um, the last, the last trick is I, I back shove and then with my back foot late, I, uh, inward heel it. And I remember cause I'd done it just once before, which is crazy. I think I only done it once. I, I didn't even like train it, but I wanted to get it in the video. You know, I wanted him to get it recorded. And so I, I, I had recorded everything else and gotten most of my clips and I just started like doing that for a while. And like, I, I had taken, I think like 20 minutes, literally I was like panning. I was like, he wasn't even like watching. He had his camera set up. He wasn't even like watching anymore because I had fallen so much, you know? Um, and then I finally hit it. And you can see my expression in the video. It's like, I was just like, thank God, like I finally got it. Um, but that one for sure was just like a pain to just like grind out just for one make at the end there. Um, but I'm glad I got it, of course. Um, but that yeah, was, for the video part, right? Yeah, it's gotta yeah. be for the I video part. For sure. Yeah, but I yeah, it. I just remember looking up and, and Jay was just like over oh, it. But, I, but <laughs> I hit it and I was just like, yes, I was like, perfect. So I'm glad, yeah, but that one that one took a lot for sure. And that one's super hard. And I think I've done it like once since. I remember trying it again and finally like getting it again. Um, but yeah, I've never gone back to that one, of course. That one's just like a, a, like a one-off like type of trick you get So once. we won't be seeing that one from you uh, this year during the flow tour, huh? I do not think and, so. And the best trick? Maybe, actually. Never mind. I'm putting the pressure on. I'm learning, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning that one. I'm getting that one consistent. Sorry for interrupting this episode, but I wanted to tell you about the CCI Sports Club membership. All of our club members will receive early access to each Shit Flowboarders Say episode, as well as discounts on merch, venues, and our coaching services. Be sure to check out ccisports.net for all the information you need to join the club and level up with our pro coaches. Now, let's get back to the podcast. That one's a scary trick if you land it. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's much. It's under. gonna be hard to get better than that, you know. That's so, some game under. Um, well, yeah, you've definitely uh, landed some big tricks and some pretty crazy ones, I'd say for sure. Um, you have to ride them on waves, right? You uh, and I know you've been to a lot. Um, can you tell me maybe what your favorite wave? has been and uh why it's your favorite hmm my favorite wave i know you've been to a lot uh coming from yeah no i've been to a know, good amount um across the world um like even here in the u.s you know traveling around yeah. for contests and yeah i'm trying to think of all the different waves and different venues um all the one i'm thinking of are my favorite but I don't know what my favorite is. So I'm still thinking through. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've been to a lot, I guess. So it's, it's I'm trying to go through. Maybe like the most buttery wave that felt like the best under your feet. That just like you 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 just locked in. You just got on and just like just felt good immediately. And we're busting all your tricks and. Um. um. Um, 
I don't know. Was that was that Oklahoma wave good? I feel like I did. I feel like it was, I feel like it was good because I I showed up and I just like won. So I feel like it had to be a good wave. I don't actually remember. Wait, I like when I, like, it's funny because when whenever, everyone asks me this, they're like, you know, like the the waves. Like, what's your like? You know, you've been to so many waves. Like, like I, like of course I really love my home wave because I get on it and it's so buttery. Like I know my I know my home wave so well, but it's not like my favorite. But it is my favorite. Like as far as like being able to get on and just ride because it's so like right, you know. Right. But it's like it's just a it's a it's a just a little single wave in Snohomish. So it's not like. My favorite, but like I mean, Linden in Utah is such a crappy wave. Do not go right there. But the backdrop <laughs> is beautiful. It's like a mountain. Like I don't know. I remember thinking yeah, that one was really yeah. pretty. Like I like that. But like the waves not nice. So it's like overall not good. I think they've resurfaced that one. Oh, since okay, my best. Sorry, the last sorry, time Linden riders. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to make you mad. Since the last <laughs> sorry, time sorry. we've ridden it, but no, um, I do remember it being pretty. Uh, Pretty janky for a contest, but the background, man, yeah, yeah seeing the mountains and the, the Utah skies, it's just a pretty setup right behind yeah. it. So I mean, there's that. there's definitely waves that I want to go to that I think are, like, I think that new Viet Vietnam wave, like, with the ocean in the background, like, the, I've, the picture I've seen, that one looks beautiful. Um, there's a wave in Ibiza, Ibiza, however you say mm -hmm. it. Um, which just sounds fun, um, <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a wave in Saipan, which is a little wave in the middle of the whatever the ocean is to the west side of the U.S. Ocean. That one, I don't know stuff, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a little wave in the middle of the the on this beautiful little island. Like I would love to go check that out. Um, but those are waves I haven't been to. I know that wasn't the question, but right. <laughs> I went ahead and answered. No, I mean there's a bunch of waves out there that. We've tried, but there's definitely a lot out there that we haven't. And, you know, I think um, me as a rider, I'm constantly always trying to, like, go to the next wave and try, try it out and yeah. see how it feels and see how I like it. And being in new settings and different places, like, it's cool seeing the people, seeing the cultures yeah. and stuff. I think that's what attracts me to flowboarding. So, yeah. Um, I mean, this wave here in Scotts Point, New York is crazy. It's a... Uh, I mean, it's, it's yeah. You, it's, you wrote it for your first time this yeah, week. Yeah, it's you know? insane, and I've barely got the hang of it. But yeah, it's 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 like obviously combining like two different things. Like you you know you got your normal flowboarding, but now you got your whole vert and like going off the lip, and uh, learning that process is like completely different. It's learning a new sport essentially. I mean, it's, you're you're on the same board and everything, but yeah, you, it's learning a whole new concept, and it's uh, definitely humbling and really fun. Um, so this wave is really, really fun. But as far as like flow rider waves, you know, I mean, I mean, like like uh, she, uh, standard waves where we do like uh, flip tricks. Sorry, um, you know, those are different. But yeah, this is like a different. Yeah, type for, of sure. Beast, well, for sure. Well, talking about Scott's point, that was one of my questions in here. Um, so you wrote it for your first time uh, this week, and uh, you definitely got a little bit of time on it and some experience. Um, I'll let. Why don't you tell how your experience was from when you first walked in and saw it um, and to actually stepping on and riding it and how you've progressed over the past few days um, yeah. on there? The wave is, like I said, it's super humbling, but walking in and seeing it, um, I mean, they say this about a lot of ways, but like the pictures don't ever do it justice, but this even more so because it's a quarter pipe and because of the height and the way it reaches and the whole surrounding area. It is just mammoth. It is it's crazy looking on. And I remember seeing it before and thinking, you know, of course it looks like, you know, a little scary, but it's like, you know, lined up with Matt. I was like, I'm gonna get on and, you know, ride this thing like crazy. And then like seeing, just like standing on that nozzle, like in front of, and how long and just the depth, you know, it's like, it, it humbles you immediately. Um, and it's fast and it's powerful. Um, and you gotta take your falls. That's what I learned from Matt. Matt taught yeah. me very much. So like, you gotta take your falls. I was scared, and I literally wouldn't go off the loop. I wouldn't get high enough. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't have learned unless I took my falls. So I basically, you know, you ride up, you jump off, you take your falls off the back. Doesn't actually hurt. It's super forgiving. Um, and then yeah, I just kept riding, kept riding it. Took a long time. This is my third day riding, and I'm finally get the concept of like going off the lip and getting the height and everything. But uh, super fun. Yeah, I would suggest everyone to do it. Everyone come out and ride. Right on. Yeah, no, it's a fun wave and definitely a lot touching on what you were saying. Um, where there's, it's it's a different experience, right? Compared to like the flow rider waves or even the pro flow um, that we've ridden. <clears throat> it's 
just a different kind of feel, right? And yeah. you're you're holding different edges and you kind of almost relearning how to ride essentially because sure. it's just not the typical wave that we're used to riding, right? Yeah. Um, but the cool part about it is the possibilities and they're almost endless, right? Um, yeah, it's so. just insane that you can do, I mean, obviously you can do flips now, which is just different than um, regular stand-up riding, but just like the airing, you know, you can like start to do like cork style. So you can, you know, being strapped, you can start to do even crazier things. But yeah, just everything. It just like makes it so much more fun because you can just do more things. You're like, okay, let me get on the strap board. Okay, let me do this. Or let me learn this concept. If I don't want to, you know, I get bored of something, I can just do something else. Right. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to learn. Right, right. Um, well, touching on that, I know one of your goals this week was to throw a backflip to oh, no. to just be able to get <laughs> up and over um, do not pull up the video you know we're putting that one up do um, not. Oh, my God. but i i wanted yeah. to ask you mm -hmm. what was it what did it take for you to build up the courage to do it because i know you were um nervous or apprehensive i'd say uh going into it after actually riding it because everybody knows we all talk a big game when uh we're, we're looking at it like, oh, oh yeah, course, I could yeah. definitely do that. And then of when you course. get on it, it's a, kind of a different story. So mm -hmm. um, can you talk about your build up to it and yeah, what yeah. made you actually finally attempt it and how it felt after? Yeah. The, um, so like I knew I wanted to try back with release and so I get there. And then finally when I got on the strap board, because I'd been riding not strap for the first little bit, when I got on the strap board and I started going up the lift, like I knew it, like I instantly got the fear. I was like, this is gonna be terrifying, like actually backflipping it, you know? Um, and so I rode, I literally rode it up a bunch. And the first day I didn't even, I didn't attempt it. I just like rode strapped once and I was like, I can't try the backflip today. Um, but then yesterday when I finally was like, okay, like I know this is like one of my last days riding, like I have to try it today if I'm gonna try it. And it took me, um, I think like four times on the wave of just like riding up and down. And I'm not psyched myself out. I was like, this isn't the run or whatever, you know? Um, and then Matt like finally taught me like a, you know, like found me a good line. It was like, I was struggling with my line, like finding a good one. Um, but then it's funny. My brother told me this, that Steve always tells himself, he's like, all right, I'm going to count down in three, two, one. And on one, no matter what, I have to do it. And so like, ever since my brother told me that, that Steve does, I was like, all right, does that. So literally in my head, I'm sitting there. I was like, I'm going to do the thing. I was like, three, two, one. One. And as soon as I hit one, I just hit the line and I was like, no matter what, I'm chunking the back lip. And as you can see from the video, I start to go up the wave and uh, I just chunk it halfway through. I don't even let myself get near the lip because I was scared and I felt like I was near the lip, but I wasn't. And just chunk it. Luckily, I made it almost completely around um, and just a little wipe out. Nothing bad happened. Um, but definitely need to try that again because that was that was terrifying. And, <laughs> and it's crazy because your back lips are so good and you get so much height. And I, I know how know to backflip. I don't know about that. No, Not they are. So Pull good. up the clip of his. Um, but you'll uh, you'll get so high and everything that like I'm like okay, so I can do that. And then I literally go, and it's just humbling, like knowing that like it takes a lot of effort and finding the right line. And there's so much that goes into like calculating the backflip and on this, especially because it's it's just crazy launching off it, and you got to do it right to uh, get that pop and everything. So yeah, it was it was it was hard. I'm glad I tried it and got it out of the way. I'm definitely gonna do it again and get that trick for sure. Might have to wildcat it more than go straight back, but mm -hmm. we'll figure that out. Well, yeah, it was a good battle to go through and yeah, yeah. always a good feeling. Just even, you know, maybe not actually landing it clean, but just getting the, just the it, fear yeah. out that like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. And I didn't unalive myself as yeah, I, yeah. I uh, tried to hit this backflip. So yeah. it's one I, of those things that, like I tell myself I was going to do it. So like if I would have left here without trying it, it's like, I would have been frustrated with myself. So, like no matter what, even if I like, even if, on that line, I was like, I'm not feeling it's like I was going to chunk it and die. If I needed to. It's like, no matter what, I'm going to try the backflip, you know? So I'm yeah. glad I got it out of the way. I just needed to do it. Yeah. Know? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, no, it, it was good. I think it. I think it helped you mentally, and um, for the next time you come back and be ever, you know, that much better. Um, just uh, m with your mentality and your psyche wise, because we all know this game is twenty five percent physical and seventy five percent psychological. So, um, yeah. So. Um, Glad you did it. Um, me too. Congratulations on hitting your shout backflip. out Scott's point. Uh -huh. Having this wave. Shout out Matt bringing me out. Yeah, that, man. It's crazy, but yeah, we did we did the backflip. We did the thing. Yeah, it was cool. It was. I love to see it. Um, we still, you know, we're 
we're just open just over three months now, I believe. And so I haven't seen very many riders be able to come out and, you know, throw uh, some, you know, crazy tricks yet. But man, I tell you what, I'm, I'm excited to see how it's going to go uh, in the future because I know there's going to, there's this wave is going to have a bunch of rippers that are just yeah, it's gonna be know, crazy tossing once gnarly they, stuff. So. All the locals get good on it. It's going to be crazy to see what yeah, they do sure. out here. We were just talking about Scott's Point and you sure. throwing backflips and riding a, a different wave uh, compared to what you're normally used to. Uh, I want to jump into riders specifically, and we talked a little bit about before about how riders have influenced you. Um, I think a lot of everybody that rides wants to incorporate style into their riding just to make it look a little better, look a little fresher, um, better mm -hmm. for the judges to look at. Sure. Do you have anybody that you can think of when you think of style um, that really points out in your mind? For sure. TK, how do you say his last name? Beretto. Beretto, <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry, TK. Um, no, major shout out to TK. TK Tuesdays. Um, yeah. I think, at, I think at some point, like early on in my career, when I first came on the scene, he might have not like me that much or there'd been beef there for something. I don't know if there actually was, I'm sorry to get, <laughs> I always loved you. I always thought you're an amazing writer and I, I still look up to you as a writer makes, and everything. What makes you say that? Uh, what, that was we there, had beef? Was there a, no, a specific no, no, no. story I think, or no, something No, 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 I just remember going to Utah and, and maybe it's just me. Like I'm not, I'm not that much, of, like I am a peaceful person, person, but sometimes, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happened. There wasn't actually anything. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't know. <laughs> he can, you know. Uh, but no, I'm just saying there was never actually anything on my end. I love you, dude. Uh, but his style is insane. The tricks he does, the grabs, the tweaks. Um, yeah, if you all know TK, hopefully we have a clip of him here. Something stylish so we can put up. Yeah, um, we'll put that up. Um, but yeah, just just in insane style and and the his repertoire of tricks, what he can do, and just endless because he just adds little things here and there. Um, but yeah, he's an amazing writer. Um, his style is out there beyond everyone else. Um, of course, Sean, like I always got to shout out Sean, even though I don't want to, um, you're a loser, Sean, but also I love you. Uh, but yeah, Sean Silvera, his style, like uh, from the get go, like he just is so clean and his style did take him so far to, you know, like his style, literally the judges awarded it points they probably shouldn't have early on um, because it was so clean and just so big and just crazy. Um, but his style, um, was always, yeah, super, super good. Like yeah, that. no, I agree. Those are some amazing riders, and for sure the style that TK and Sean both had or have, it's it's just uh, incredible incredible to watch when they go out and showcase some of their, even their basic stuff. It just looks so good and so well executed and effortless, you know? Yeah. And so it just Same. makes it look that much better. Um, so... W talking about you know writing and style uh, a big part of what goes into your writing um, especially you as a writer uh, is your your technicality right you're really techy with your tricks you throw some really big tricks and it's a lot of uh, different components involved into throwing those technical type tricks um, and I know of a lot of writers that do have uh, some techier type tricks is there anybody that that point that points out in your mind that's influenced you um in the technical department for flowboarding dude i mean honestly um what's his name uh, I, don't, I don't want to mess it up he's gonna watch this and hate me uh Man manoa guy oh, he jordan, manoa. jordan jordan manoa um he's actually From one of the he's, he's the first guy he doesn't ride much anymore and i think yeah he's got his own thing going but um he, he's the first guy i saw do the front foot impossible on the on the uh the flow rider so i knew it was possible on the flow rider so major shout out to him because uh, it wasn't even i didn't even think of it to try it as a trick until jordan until i saw him do it and and thank God he did because it, I mean he doesn't ride much anymore. If he does, he doesn't post. And so like this was one of the, like the last things I saw. And so um, he inspired me to try that. Um, yeah, and he's he he actually if you watch his riding, his pop, he does this thing and he'll yeah, get enormous. so high. Like he's actually yeah an insane rider. He is so technical. 
Um, yeah, shout out Jordan. Um, and, yeah, and, and he definitely doing that does the double possible. pump kind yeah, of pop. Yeah, yeah, he gets, he gets just so shoots his high. tricks up so high. Um, but yeah, he'll do some gnarly things. Those Utah riders, they're just insane. But yeah, yeah he, for sure. He he's an OG that the yeah did that before everyone else, and so I wouldn't even have tried it if it wasn't for him, honestly. So. That's interesting. Um, I didn't know that. Um, and Jordan is. Definitely an incredible rider, and I remember seeing his front foot impossible. And then he one upped it and did the Merlin twist. Merlin twist, yeah. Which that was the first time I had ever seen that trick been done. Yeah, this first time, yeah, I've seen it done so, too. So um, I had known of one other rider uh, prior to Jordan Manoa, which was another Utah rider who used oh, to yeah? throw the front foot impossible. Oh, okay. And it was the owner and maker of uh, Ash Flowboards back in the day, Scott House. Oh, that's, that's and nice, yeah. he was also an incredible rider, super techie. Yeah, um, Through these huge front foot impossibles across the wave. And it was just super sick to watch. And especially back, back in those days when, you know, the level of riding wasn't near... Um, as advanced as it's yeah, it, to be it doing is that today, back then is you know, insane. Yeah, um, it's yeah, like a, it was ahead definitely of its time. super cool to watch and ahead of its time for sure. Um, but it's cool you've continued to to bring it out and um, throw it in contests and against people and land it consistently. So uh, yeah. it's a super cool trick, and I'm I'm glad to watch it whenever uh, you do get a chance to throw it in the contest so. yeah i gotta get the merlin twist down next i've landed a couple times i never got it consistent you know that'd be insane add the a little front side into there yeah front but, side 180 with the front foot impossible yeah insane. pretty yeah. sick trick for sure i wanted to ask you is there anybody that you'd like to shout out um during the video i know you've done done a lot of shout outs uh so far during the podcast but um, is there anybody specifically you want to shout out? Um, yeah, I mean, to... CCI again, of course, and Aquaflow, but my family who's always supported me, my brothers and sisters, literally all every step of the way. My girlfriend, Keely, she's amazing, always supported me. Um, all the uh, all the Snohomish riders, Zach, Schuster, all those riders that have supported me along the way. Of course, Matt and Lexi, y'all are amazing, mm -hmm. always doing everything for me and everything, bring me out here, appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, and the whole flowboarding community and just everything it's given back to me because um, this has been my life for the last 10 years. So I love it and I appreciate y'all and just being a part of it and everything. Yeah. It's been great. But yeah. Really cool. Yeah. I, uh, I think uh, flowboarding community has definitely brought a lot of um, unique things into my life and I'm sure the same to you so for sure um, we appreciate flowboarding as a whole and mm -hmm. it's cool to see all the riders that are really throwing down and um, just continue to to up the level of riding and you know um, how it's you know grown yeah. so so with that being said you are the current 2023 uh, Stand Up Men's Pro World Champion. I am. Um, how does it feel to be the world champion after coming so close for so many years to finally get that win under your belt? No, uh, yeah, it feels insane. It almost didn't feel real, and it took a while to like set in. Because um, yeah, I've, I have been trying for a while, and there's been a lot of upset and defeat, um, getting really close. Um, yeah, which is my own take, doing, but you've taken second how many times? Twice now. The last two years before, yeah. So I got second two years in a row. So it it came super close in South Korea against Bloody Monster and Brad, and just fell. And then uh, <laughs> and then happens the next to the best year, of us. yeah, against Daniel, I I hit and it was super close, and I should have just done harder stuff. So this year I did harder stuff, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and finally won it. But yeah, it's it's unreal. It's uh, to finally do it because it was something I was working towards for so long. It definitely was a goal because like there's been other goals along the way, like nationals and and oh, yeah. like little things or learning certain tricks and stuff. But this has always been like the end game goal. And it became achievable in 2019, you know, and then COVID and just losing twice. And so to finally, you know, get it in 2023, uh, yeah, feels amazing. It's unreal. Um, yeah, I'm super grateful. It's insane. Oh, that's cool. I mean, yeah, yeah it's always tough when you're, you know, nipping at the bud. You're right there. You're, you can taste it. And 
it's the very, very end, and you just can't finish the very, very last part. And so yeah. to be able to come and come back and redeem yourself and it, um, yeah. really take take home the W and the final, you know, the the biggest contest, um, you know, during the tour, I think it's it, it shows a lot to your character because you have to really fight through those those things that really conquered you before so sure. um yeah no it's good stuff and congratulations that's a huge accomplishment under your belt and Thank uh, you. Appreciate can't it. wait to see how long you hold your title so um we'll see hopefully hopefully you can continue your uh forever your march yeah and uh <laughs> keep taking out uh some of the best in the world so we'll see. i look forward to watching that so thank you now that you are the world champion what are your plans next what are you doing going forward going to disney world i'm just going playing. to disney um, world uh, right <laughs> So going plans going forward now that I am the world champion. Well, first I came here. I went to Florida, you know, um, got my new board going underway. Come here, ride this wave. I'm going to Thailand, um, March fifth th through the eighteenth. We're gonna be hitting Cartoon Network wave, Pattaya. Yeah, which, I think uh, it's actually called something else now. Sorry, it's not the Cartoon Network wave. Amazon. No, 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 no. I, yeah. I can't remember. Or Columbia Pictures. I think Columbia it's Columbia Pictures, Pictures wave. We're hitting. Yeah, we're hitting a couple of ways. So anyone in Thailand, uh, be on the lookout for the schedule. It's probably already posted on Aquaflow website or in mine and on the Instagram. But uh, yeah, going to Thailand, I'm um, going to do a little tour Super there cool. and ride with all the riders over there and do that. Um, maybe something with China in the works. I got hit up by some riders over there, but nothing's, nothing's set. Um, but yeah, and then just doing the tour again and riding and just trying to just travel to as many flow riders as I can. Just get keep getting exposure, riding, and you know, right getting on. better. But yeah. So you plan on far. doing a, a majority of the flow tour this year, or? Yeah, I'll do. Yeah, I'll probably. Because last the stuff year you took I, a majority of it off. I took everything. I just did nationals, yeah, and then went to worlds and um, won both of them. At, at the I did. Same time. I did. I did <laughs> win both. But uh, I do want to go to more just. Um, you know, like I said, just to be there and be a part of it. So I'll probably try to hit at least one or two prime stops, um, depending on where they are once they announce that. And then for sure nationals, for sure worlds, um, hopefully out of the country this year. We'll see. All right on. Cool. Well, that's big stuff coming uh, your way. I big think um, that is uh, cool that we're able to be able to travel and you know, see the different places and the different venues. Um, sure. And so Thailand's definitely fun. I've been there, had a great time when I went. So I'm excited. I think you'll, uh, yeah, you should have a great time. I have a good question for you, um, Mr. World Champion. Uh, what do you keep in your flowboard bag? Uh, do you do you bring certain stuff to the wave that you always have? That's like your go-to that you always make sure you have with you while you're riding. I mean. I always bring my board. I always bring my towel. You gotta make sure you can dry off. <laughs> um, I always. I don't know. I, let me think. What do I bring with me? I mean, I live in Seattle. It's freezing, so I always bring a hoodie and, and sweats after, because you're cold, you know, and it's, you're gonna be wet. So you always gotta bring a uh, warm change of clothes. I don't know. Maybe a snack. Maybe some water. Water for sure. You gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> you always gotta stay hydrated. Um, Otherwise, you're over there just drinking the flow water. And yeah, you don't want to do you that. Do you know what happens <laughs> in the flow water? <laughs> Probably no good things. Do not so, drink flow water. Uh, I would avoid do not that. Drink should flow be. Water. We should put a disclaimer. Yeah, uh, don't, don't drink, drink the flow, flow water. water. <laughs> Please do not. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely just water. Maybe a snack. You know, a Cliff Bar. Um, uh, change of clothes. Uh, yeah. Um, Nothing too special. Maybe a, just... I, I mean a camera, a GoPro, my filmer. Yeah. All in the bag. Just pull it. You just pull your whole filmer, <laughs> yeah, filmer out. Yeah, yeah. Your whole guy. <laughs> hey man, what's up? Yeah, I'm he here stays to in the bag. I, I pay him to stay in the bag. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's part of the salary. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I can really think of. Um, because because I don't actually have a flow bag, so. 
Oh, so you don't even bring a flowboard bag with nah, you? Nah, gotcha. nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, I'm the I'm the guy that walks up that's missing his flowboard and just has a towel, and then I ask to borrow someone's flowboard. <laughs> so, well, you did that this trip, didn't you? I did, you? I did, yeah. And I've, I've done it in a contest before. I'm known to forget. Yep. forget yeah, the words I, see, I remember time. one time in Idaho where you walked up and yeah. you didn't have a, a board. And... Happens to the best of us. You became the world champion. Uh, you're now the pro flowboarder that I think everybody is trying to uh, beat and get to at this Hopefully point not. because you're at the top. True. Um, Don't beat me. I have a, a inkling that I know you grew up uh, as a gymnast and doing cheer and doing a lot of different kind of uh, tricks that are... Um, you know, flipping, rotating, things like that, and jumping in general. Sure. Do you think that those skills helped you become a great flowboarder um, and reach the top? For sure. I mean, balance-wise, I mean, in in gymnastics and cheerleading, when you're flipping, you have to be very precise and you land, you know, very precise, you know, weight together and everything. And obviously flowboarding is feet apart, but it, the um, similarities as, you know, as far as the balance and, and learning to, like literally bouncing high and coming down, you know, very together and, and all that, I think uh, the crossover very much helped uh, me progress faster than I would have if I didn't have that in my background. Um, that makes sense. But yeah, sure. all, all, yeah, I mean, cheerleading it just made me strong. Like literally, I never work out. I'd like, like my body is from cheerleading, you know, and it's just, it just stayed. And, you know, <laughs> a thank, lot of thank core. Thank God, you know, I'm DNA sure. and genetics. But uh, yeah, yeah, core and all that. But yeah, the cheerleading definitely like got me in shape and the balance and like little things like that. And then I just had to like apply it to the board basically. Right. So like, I understood balance and like, you know, being precise. And then I just had to like do it on the board and, and kick my feet around and do it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it definitely helped all doing any, any sort of, Balancing what gymnastics and cheerleading is very much all that is. Gotcha. So let me write down: start training in gymnastics. Yes, cheerleading, cheerleading, <laughs> cheerleading, super uh, fun. Cheerleading. competitive cheer. Got Shout it. out to yeah, cheer athletics. I already did, but yeah, yeah. Well, cool. I mean, yeah, you're definitely a great flowboarder, and some 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 of the times I watch you jump and the way you rotate the board it just looks so effortless so i assume balance definitely plays a big role in that and being that you have that experience and um and just repertoire and your bag just helps go a long way i remember hearing a story uh, about your first time in south korea with daniel trapcheck mm -hmm. and you guys rode a local contest uh, and then it was after a long night of partying yeah, uh, yeah, what happened that contest? Man. Yeah, shout out Daniel Trabacek. Um, I mean, I'll say this before I tell the Daniel story and 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 and, and embarrass him a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the only reason I went to South Korea is because Daniel. So Daniel called me up one day and he's like, "Hey, I'm going to South Korea because um, they're bringing me out to judge and ride at this contest, this like little local contest, um, and they need someone else." And I'm literally recommending you. And he and they say, you know, if if this guy you're recommending, you know, he'd come. So would you want to go to South Korea with me? And I was like, yeah, like I'm taking this opportunity 100%. Um, so the only reason I was even there is because Daniel literally offered my name. I didn't ask it. He literally just called me up out of the blue one day. So shout out Daniel literally made that opportunity happen. It wouldn't have uh, happened without him. So I love you, Daniel. Sorry for telling the story. Um, but we are in South Korea, and it's my first time there. I think Daniel's been there before. But uh, the, the guy who flew us out just takes us out partying or drinking, and we literally – we don't go to sleep like it's it's six it's like 7 a.m and we're and we're pulling back up to the uh hotel and i'm not joking we get out of the taxi and, and like i think we like puke we like we puke <laughs> and then we turn and the guy who flew us in is pulling up to pick us up to like go to the venue and because he's like we have to get there early to like set up and like do stuff because it's like contest day and so like we literally don't even get to sleep like we literally are are, are drunk and then have to go to this contest and I, I mean i was pretty bad but daniel was definitely worse off than me he had drinking a lot um <laughs> so we get to this contest and we're judging and we're or we set up and like you know time goes by and daniel's just like puking the whole time and i think like eventually like daniel's gonna be okay you know but daniel's judging and in between judging he's having to go puke and it comes up it's daniel's turn to ride and he's like still throwing up but he doesn't want to like not ride because this dude flew us out to Korea for this contest and for, for just so Daniel's like I'm gonna ride you know so Daniel like takes his run 
And then, like, when it's, like, he gets off and it's, like, another, you know, rider run. Daniel, like, literally runs off the wave and, like, I see him peek out. And he's just, like, throwing up in between his <laughs> rides. Literally, like, pro projectile, like, just throwing up. I'm, like, how is Daniel actually riding right now? Like, like riding the solid. Wave? Where was no, he no, he, up? He, no, he had, like, stepped off because it was, like, in a warehouse. Of, like, hopefully we have a picture of the South Korea wave. Yeah, it's, like, in, the, in a warehouse. And so he, like, stepped off the wave and then he, like, ran out. It was, like, a 10 foot and then, like, the, a door. Um... But yeah, and he went and puked, or maybe it was a trash can right beside there or something. But yeah, but in between every run, it was every single run he like <laughs> went and like had to go puke because he was going so hard to like win, you know, the contest of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he, yeah, he of course won the contest, puked in between every run, puked. Like, Daniel was sickly, and but he survived. Daniel's still alive <laughs> to this day. Love Daniel. Typical. Um, but yeah, Typical it was Daniel. it was just crazy to to. Like I was rough, you know, but Daniel, Daniel had it extra rough because he wrote stand up and bodyboard, and that body uh, yeah. bodyboard beats you up, you know, especially yeah, for sure. especially on zero sleep drinking in South Korea. It's not a, a not a mix you normally want to do. So I, we definitely learned our lesson, <laughs> and we don't party that hard before the contest. We do that after now. After now. Yeah, I'm yeah, imagine. but but that was definitely a rude awakening. That was we were younger then. We were younger. <laughs> that was like 2018 because that was our first time in South Korea. Yeah, it was the year before 2018. Yeah, so it was like five years ago now. Yeah, well, sounds was, like fun and yeah, I mean, you yeah. you guys were able to ride well, <laughs> even even pushing through that, not being able to have a lot of sleep and yeah. drinking. So yeah, Good I, I did guys. win the contest too. Actually, yeah, yeah, I did oh, yeah, win. Right yeah, 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 I did win even. So yeah. you won stand up and he won the bodyboard. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. he won bodyboard in South Korea. Gotcha. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Um. I wouldn't recommend doing that before your contest. So. No, never, no, no, no. But it did work for them. So we did knows. it so y'all don't have to. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, speaking about South Korea, you and I spent some time in South Korea together going yes, to the World Flowboarding Championships, I think, in 2019. Yes, um, 2019, right before COVID. Yep. And we started our after party... After the contest, um, which you took second at, did, um, yes. we started the party at, in your room, and slowly but surely, more people started coming in, and we changed locations, it's, and that night, yeah. we ended up with the uh, cops chasing us, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You want to go ahead and tell a little bit about that story? And Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I had a hotel room, and it was a pretty nice hotel room, and we were inviting people over. And eventually, I remember we got a noise complaint. It was like, there's too many people. Like it's uh, So, we're like, all right, we just got to go down to the street. Like, we'll find we'll find something to do in the street. Like, we'll walk around, like, find something. But, like, where, where my hotel was was not like a... There wasn't, like, stuff to do. It was very residential, like, very tall building of just, like, apartments of, you know, people living. And so we're we're outside with, like, 40 flowboarders, like, everybody mm -hmm. from the contest or everybody that came, you know. Um, and we're all hanging out just making noise. And so, of course, well, I didn't realize at the time, but the, the residents start calling a noise complaints because it's just a bunch of crazy people in their town that don't even, aren't even from here, you know, and we're just like making noise, acting crazy because we've been drinking. Um, and so the cops come and it was Fatty, Fatty Flamingo with his, that's his Instagram. I don't know, his, his, fat, shout out Fatty. Hopefully we got a picture of him. Um, but he uh, he was at that contest and he, uh, he said, cops, run! Which, <laughs> like, when someone says that, like everyone, I guess, does it. And so once someone started running, everyone just runs, which I wasn't going to run, but... That was it. Everyone's <laughs> running. And so everyone starts running for the cops. I think there was like four or five cops. And we end up getting split into two groups. You get split into a very much smaller group than us where I'm in a group with like 30 people. And you're in a group with like a couple people. Yep. And you split off and you get safe. My group is the big group. So, of course, the cops follow the big group. We ended up running. Like, it was for a while. We had to have ran for like at least a minute up like these corridors. Like, we're all just hustling, bustling. And we make it to like this rooftop and we think we're being so sneaky, but like with 30 people, you can't be sneaky. Like you're the <laughs> loudest people ever. And so the cops like show up and they're literally just like, we got you. <laughs> and we're like, ah. Uh, but yeah, they let us off. They uh, they realized that we were just drunk tourists and no harm and that we were, yeah, nothing was going to happen. <laughs> and Matt actually, 
just on looks. It, where Matt had hidden, Matt like seen us with the cops yeah. and everything. And Matt yeah. was just gonna get a let, let us get arrested. He, he didn't know what was going on, but Matt was just like, uh, you know, that's yes, your spot for getting caught. So. I mean, I don't so. think I could have done much. Uh, I didn't know. Help South your Korean. homies. No, I, <laughs> I didn't know Korean, so what was I gonna yell? An American. Oh, hey, I'm say oh. here. <laughs> Two, come arrest me also. Who's going to bail you out? So, Kosamida. We know how to say a couple things. But, uh, yeah. oh, but anyways. You say hello Matt. and thank you to the yeah, cops. Yeah, Kosamida. They're definitely taking you in. They're like, oh, he's thanked me for coming and catching him. So, But, uh, yeah, we got off. The, uh, some, there was some adults that like came down and were like, I mean, even though we were adults too. I mean, they, the older adults came down and were like, come on. Right? And, and so the cops were like, yeah, just stop making all that noise and everything. I think we still like partied for like a little bit longer, but we didn't get the cop call on us again. We got out of there, but um, yeah, that was lesson learned. I definitely don't like the cops getting called on us in other countries, so don't act too wild in uh, <laughs> other countries where. You yeah, know, and granted, language. and granted, it definitely wasn't our uh, intentions and our doing. But when the cops yeah, came so I, and sorry, everybody South started Korea. running, I love you. Um, I want to come back to your country. <laughs> I didn't mean to just. Dist- Disturb your peace in that small town. Yeah, it was a small town where we were staying at that point. But um, still a lot of fun, great story. Nothing came out of it. We were, it was pretty harmless to say the least. Can't cuff this. It was, (laughs) um, we're glad they didn't talk to you specifically because we would have known what might have been the answer after that. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, so uh, South Korea was a lot of fun. Um, We had good times there. And we also had good times together in uh, Texas uh, because every year we used to go and do the State Fair of Texas. Do you have a specific memory uh, that you could share that you that really sticks out in your mind for the State Fair of Texas days? Uh, if you guys don't know, there's the State Fair of Texas is in Dallas, Texas. They had a permanent Flowrider installation there. And um, they used to have a few of the pros come out and do demonstrations, um, basically ride and kind of showcase for um, the public that was walking by. So we were a part of that for a few years. And so, yeah, I wanted to ask you. Yeah, yeah, I did that every year since its like inception, which was really cool that I got invited to do that um, from the get-go. Then obviously you came on just like two years later with Lexi and everything. Right. Um, But yeah, I mean... There's a lot of good memories, a lot of ones I probably can't say, but the <laughs> ones I can say, um, yeah, the Texas OU game is always a highlight because the it's like the Red River rivalry. I, the, red I Red River rivalry. I, don't I laugh. To say that five times. Like behind the cameras laughing. <laughs> um, I'm not. Yeah, he said it. So cut mine. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it's a big, big uh, football game that goes on, and they bring out. It, I think over. A million people, they say, like, are, are come through there. Like, aren't there at one time, but come right. through in that day. Um, and so it's insane. Um, when the game lets out, we're riding the flow rider, and there's pictures. Hopefully we can pull up one of Nick's pictures um, that literally is out there. And you can see the crowd, and there's literally, like, tens of thousands of people, like, spread out of the crowd. Maybe thousands of thousands. Tens, probably tens of thousands. Like, across the whole it's thing. a lot of people. And it's sure. crazy to yeah. just be sitting there. And like, of course, like, a lot of them are moving and going by, but it's, like, you feel the impact. Literally, like, there's a stadium of people in front of you um riding so that's always a lot of fun um riding you know when that game lets out around then um but also just riding with all the guys for eight hours a day because when when we first got that gig like seven years ago i was i was not that good and i actually i got i got the gig from a recommendation from Alyssa mice she had Mm -hmm. From the, the high girl, yeah, it's crazy. I had, so she had helped me, and then I remember I got the job there at Aqua Shop, and I had gotten kind of good. Like I was like you know one of the best writers there, and she had come up a couple of times. So she was still writing at the time, and so she knew of me being like the stand-up guy there or whatever. And when the uh, State Fair of Texas people. Uh, we're looking for people for the flow rider because they decided, you know, they want that to be, they want some riders to show it off right. for the State Fair of Texas. Um, somehow her name was given to them to, for like, she's like the hype, because she owned hype, hype, she owned this hype right. company. And so she was associated with like flow rider and hype or having like a company or whatever. So they contacted her asking like, do you want to ride or do you know riders for this? And she gave my name, thank God, like I, I'm shout out to her for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, she gave my name just because she knew I was a good stand-up writer and I lived in the area. So the only reason I got that gig there and was able to, like, that literally helped projectile my career because I was able to ride so much and meet new writers there. But it's, it's only because Alyssa Myers recommended my name, so shout out her. Um, 
but yeah, so I got the gig at the the state fair, and that's where I met Zachary Lenz, Babyface. Shout out Babyface. Mm. Um, I think the first year Lane who was a uh, she's a bodyboard, old school body from Hurricane Harbor, um, and a couple other guys. I, I had Rhett Hughes, uh, <laughs> richer than you, Rhett Hughes. Um, <laughs> there's a uh, who else? They're gonna be so mad at me if I don't even remember the other people. Tyler Danick. Of course, OG, one of the most OG bodyboarders in the game. Yeah. Won the barrel championship way back when, like, that started the whole thing. Um, yeah, so I got to meet a lot of people just because my name was recommended. And so then from there, was, we were riding eight hours a day on this Texas wave for a month straight. But we weren't teaching people. It was the demo. So we were able yeah. to just ride and practice and just ride and ride. And I know you know you came on. Yeah, uh, but just ride to, to ride and ride. And, and so it just got me so good so quickly even though it's a month and then it motivated you more you go back to your wave and you're like i get so much ride time here after you know and just ride more and more but yeah yeah i like i said i guess like looking back i've had like there's a lot of people just like randomly recommend me in this i've had a lot of opportunities just like fell in my lap you know and that right. really set the course for my career because like if i haven't like, not that i wouldn't have kept forward but like that really motivated once i got that gig you know i was like i'm right. i'm showing off to be like i need to get better and you right. know so but yeah, the Texas State Fair was a you know huge help in getting that gig and, and being able to ride a lot more and everything. Yeah, th those were good times. Like yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think I learned a lot of tricks at that wave specifically just because yeah, the amount of practice that we were able to do. So yeah, we writing. were trying to entertain and put on shows for people, so we definitely did the things that we know we we're capable of. But there was a lot of time that we did get to practice, and it was. It, I think it definitely helped me and my consistency and um, my progression uh, mm -hmm. over the years. I wish so. they still had it. I wish yeah, they'd bring man. us back. Yeah, for sure. Anyone who's watching this from the state yeah. fair. Rusty, let us Please know. Please send us the email. We'll, we'll, we'll come, come back. back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, those were great times. Um, yeah. Definitely a lot of good riding that was going down during those times yeah hopefully we can pull up a clip from the state fair of some of the riding it's just the sun and like yeah we got some nick with nick Wynn was there for a couple of years he got some really cool videos and shots from the back and yeah there's just it's a it was such a fun time with all the homies and just being able to progress together because like looking back now like we're all like you know like seasoned we but like that was the time like when like we, we were like you know in it but we were coming up and we learned it together that's a lot of time right. like we put in like, like we learned tricks today like literally like you know the harder ones and everything and it's just and, fun to think back. And just being the fact that we were riding with, we, we were all pretty decent riders, and I think we all motivated each other, kind of pushed each other, because I'd see you riding, so I would be like, man, I got to do better. I got to hit my tricks in front of them. And I think the same must have gone for you guys and sure. try to help you push your progression and like what, how much can I one up them, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I think that's, I think that was all of our mentalities during that time. Yeah. Um, but it was cool because we got to ride with each other and we got to, you know, kind of feed off of each other um, during that time. So yeah, like was, I said, like looking back, it's almost like, like a nostalgic thing because like I wish we had like and the fact that it's not a thing it's like I miss it so bad because like yeah. and I remember like after it I'd be like ah oh, like you know by the end we'd be like not like tired but it's like all right like time to go like but now it's like I wish we had taken it off for granted as well and like put an every out because I was like looking back it's so much fun you know and it's like yeah we're not gonna sure. have that again it's gone you yeah know? it's like sad to think about it it's just maybe gone. they'll bring it back rusty if you're out there <laughs> we did a, a lot of tricks uh, at the state fair of Texas but you specifically have done uh, a lot of tricks in your repertoire and your bag. Um, one that I know of specifically uh, is a trick that's named after you uh, in flowboarding called the Callens Flip. And the Callens Flip is where Scott does a backflip from his board and leaves his board, disconnects, does a backflip, lands directly back onto his board uh, which is incredible. Um, and so can you give me a little bit of history behind what made you decide to try that trick and what went into landing that for the first time? Because I feel like that would have taken millions of tries if it were me. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just like the front foot impossible, how I saw Jordan do it, and that's the only reason I even like knew it was possible and wanted to try it on the, on the floorboard, I saw Brad Spencer... Um, backflip 
off, so hopefully you have a clip of it, um, off his board, but he's holding another floorboard. So he's standing on a floor, holding another floorboard, he backflips and then lands on the floorboard he's, he's holding, um, which is crazy, which is absolutely insane. I've, ac I've actually never done that. I've never actually even tried it. I saw it and when I, because I am used to backflipping, obviously I did cheerleading and everything. I don't hold stuff in my hand and I've tried it before and it almost like is awkward for me because I'm so used to thinking about other things when I'm holding something in my hand, it like feels weird. So I was like, how, I want to try something like that because I, you know, I'm used to flipping and doing right. you know, cheerleading and gymnastics. Um, so I was like, how do I do that trick without having to hold the board? So I was like, the only other way is like, if I just backflip off the board, I'm literally on and land back on it. Right. Um, so that's how I got to the concept of like trying that. Um, but yeah, Brad's, Brad Spencer is the only reason I even got to the point of thinking that was possible or, or coming up with the trick. Um, so shout out him. That was crazy that he even does, does does that trick. And I actually got to see him do it in person in the Dominican Republic, which was crazy to see after his run. He like stood there and, and did it, um, which was really cool because I'd only seen it in video up till that point. Um, but yeah, and it took uh, hundreds of tries. I sat there at Aqua Shop in Dallas and just backflip and backflip. And a lot of the time the board flies away because you're pressing off water so the board will fling. And so it was learning of keeping the concept of the board. How do I, how do I have to jump to where the board will stay pretty much underneath? And then also while doing that type of jump, I need to jump high enough and have enough time to be able to flip and spot the board, you know? Right. Um, so combining all those things is very hard and never got it consistent. It's not like I can go out there and do it right now, you know? <laughs> it would take me hundreds of tries maybe to ever land it again. Right. Um, but yeah, in, in, in the prime of it, I got a couple good ones clean, land on the board. Um, but yeah, hopefully we have a clip of it. I like, I think there's one on my Instagram I mean, like landing and hand checking it. Um, but yeah, it's it's an insane trick. And since then, um, Jackson will try it. Shout out Jackson from yeah Jackson Myers. OBX. Um, and then the one of the Utah boys, Brian um, Aguire or something. He's y'all would recognize. But uh, he's he hasn't written in a couple of years. But he I remember seeing oh, him doing Brandon. It. Yeah, he's, he's the hope. He got he's close. So cool. he's, he got close to getting it. And yeah, uh, he used to throw him a lot in the contest. It was insane. So shout out them to yeah. carry it on. Um, but I honestly don't even know if people know like yeah the origin or that yeah why I tried it or that I even because no one's I since in the last couple of years I haven't done it you know and so I don't even know if they know I'm that the trick comes from me or if it's right. called the council but yeah I did it first so shout out <laughs> and I'm, I'm grateful that people like you know carry it on and keep doing it um, but yeah it right. all it yeah. all I got the idea from Brad Brad was the start of it so shout out Brad and doing that his backflip which is very dope yeah to the to another board which. Totally, totally difficult, just a, just like yours, um, but a different difficulty, I think. Yeah. Um, being the fact that you got weight in your hand and could throw you a little more off axis, and yeah. just having to be precise with, you know, you landing directly back to your board. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely a cool trick, a uh, party trick to say the least. Uh, I don't yeah. think I. I don't think we'll see you throwing that in uh, any contest so, mm. during best trick. Uh, but I would be interested to see how the judges score that. So yeah. let um, us know in the comments, judges. Yeah, let if you're, us know if you're in the watching comments this, or what you, you think that, that uh, uh, <laughs> Callan's flip should be scored because it's a pretty impressive trick. We know to you're say watching this, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, flow boarders? Are you looking to hit that next big trick like Flow Daddy, but just can't seem to land it? Book your digital review at ccisports.net to get teamed up with one of our pro coaches to help you land that new trick. Your coach will schedule a time with you to sit down and analyze your video clips together to help pinpoint where you're not finding success. They will also be showcasing clips of them landing that same trick to help you better understand the motions. After the review, your coach will give you tips and advice for you to apply during your next shred session. We help all riders, whether you're bodyboarding or riding stand-up, so join us to level up together. Remember, you never shred alone when riding with CCI Sports. Now, let's get back to the show. Anyway, so after, I mean, doing the Callum's flip is definitely impressive. And um, you've, you've had a lot of tricks in your day. Um, one specific trick that I actually personally witnessed was not on the wave. And uh, it was a funny time from when we were in 
Texas at Epic Waters. I believe it was like 2021 for the contest. Oh, and yeah. you were uh, talking to a couple other pro flowboarders, um, Jake Chipman and Taylor Hales, the homies from Utah. Um, and as you were talking to them, you somehow managed to fall backwards off of the sidewall, which, man, we were... It was pretty high at that point. It must have been four foot, five foot off of the uh, cement on the side. And yeah, you bounced and came back up. And I just want to know, how did you not crack your head open and unalive yourself yeah, during no, that moment? Yeah, no, I just want to say, before I tell the story, I definitely don't get too drunk beside the flow rider like I did. But yes, I was I was definitely had drinks. It was after the contest. And so people were still riding for for fun. But I had gone up and, and I was talking to some pros and I was sitting on the on the edge of the concrete on the side, but there was nothing behind it, just falls into concrete. Um, and I was I was just too drunk and I literally slipped and I fell back. And luckily there was the divider there, the divider they put <laughs> on the wave that that divided wasn't it. in yeah, use. Yeah, so at it the wasn't time. used because they were riding full wave, and they just ha happened to put it right there. And thank God they did. It literally saved my life. I literally, and they tell me this. I don't exactly remember, <laughs> but I fell the five feet off, or maybe it was more, and I just fell back. And I thought I was gonna die. And I land on the divider, and it's inflated the divider. And I just bounced right back up, and literally just like pop right back up to my feet. And I was like, ha, and <laughs> like a cat, <laughs> literally. And thank God it was there. I literally would have cracked my head. My flow ring career would be over. Um, but yeah, that divider saved my life. So I love dividers. We can divide any wave ever. <laughs> I'll ride a divided wave with you. I mean, yeah, um, you're used to a single wave, so yeah, that wouldn't yeah. bother you very much. Um, but yeah, after that, dividers um, are great. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, the I would have died. It would have been terrible. Um, yeah, learn my lesson. Don't drink too much and <laughs> hang out beside the flow rider and on the edge. It can be dangerous. So yeah, those be. things um, mix in together. Yeah. Might not be a good time every time. So. Um, well, we're glad you made it and you're Thank still you. with us and, uh, it was pretty epic. Uh, I think <laughs> you are very, very much like a cat and always seem to land on your feet no matter what, even when you're not on the flow. So <laughs> pretty impressive to watch, uh, sometimes I'm talking about, um, big tricks and, uh, some of them you've landed have been crazy. Uh, we want to know what's the next big trick that you're working on or the just a trick that you just wish you could land. Trick I wish I could land or working on. Honestly, I've never really gotten um, front big heel. It's always frustrated me because I can laser and I can burial flip. I can double burial flip. I, I can get all those different variants of it, but I can't laser with the front side 180, right. which is a big heel. Um, <clears throat> and that's why I've always admired Chuck or anyone that can do it, but he's been doing it for years. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, front, front big heel is just, I've uh, been my, you know, my Achilles heel crux. I can't, I can't land it. Um, so that one's always frustrated me, even though I feel like I should. Yeah, that's interesting because I feel like that would be one that you'd be a little bit better at because you do have a really good I can uh, front, front heel, side 180, yeah. I can front, front side heel, big yeah. spins. And you throw your front okay. side big spins in your runs like yeah. pretty much without thinking, it seems like. Yeah. So um, just to add a little bit of a, a flip into it, I mean... Yeah. I can't heel Definitely flip. Definitely diff difficult, but yeah, but it's yeah, it's crazy because I get the front side heel flips. I can literally turn, but I, if you add that extra shove in there, I would literally just lose it. Like, and I and I try. I remember trying it for hours. Like, and it's been a while since I tried. Maybe I should go back. Maybe I should go back to it and give it another try. But right. um, yeah, that front big heel is always. And the thing is, like, it is a very difficult trick. But if you think about like crazy, crazy, like you're thinking about late, like hard flip and stuff like that, like obviously, like you know, the front big heel is not, you know, the hardest, hardest. But like, right. it's just always, you know, stop me. I can't get it. So that one's um, I want to get, and I should probably go back to that now. Talking about that, um, and then just getting everything in switch. I guess um, right. that's the hard stuff. Double double flip tricks. You know, I got the double varial heel. Um, I got a double kick flip the other day. The shout out the Newman brothers when I was in Florida, they actually gave me some tips that actually really helped me on my double kick flip, and so I was able. Yeah, to Yeah, they've them. been throwing those a lot. Yeah, in the, the Newmans have been insane and, in contests. Yeah, yeah and their double flips, sure. 
terrifying. Sure. Y'all got to start riding so good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was able to get that. And so learning just more double double flips and like that, I think that's like the 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 boundary. Because like doing that in runs, I think. Because everyone's like, we're all doing flip tricks our whole run now. And then best trick is double trick. I think eventually we're going to start seeing some double tricks and runs. Right. And the yeah. best trick is going to be something crazy, you know. So I think right. double tricks that next that next round Level up. and yeah, right. combos and stuff. But yeah, double tricks for sure. Let's do more of those for sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, those, you, you got a couple of double tricks in your bag and so, and they look really, you know, difficult and hard, but really cool at the same time because it's a lot of flipping going around, so. Okay, so we're about to wrap it up. I, uh, I think we've went over a lot and you shared a lot of good stories. Um, but I think the one thing that we haven't gone over that's probably the most important thing is we all want to know, where know. did the name Flow Daddy come from? Oh my gosh, this is the question. Um, honestly, it's not that good of a story. Uh, I was with an ex-girlfriend at the time and my name was just Scott Callens on my Instagram handle and um, I wanted to change it. I, I didn't want like just my name, you know, I was like, right. but I didn't have a nickname. I didn't have anything or whatever. And uh, she literally at the time was like, why don't you go by like Flow Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I was like, let me see if it's taken. And Flow Daddy was, and it was like a rapper. And he only had like 2,000 followers. And I was, you know, he was like, I'm Flow Daddy. So I was like, <laughs> I can't be like, Flow. he's Flow Daddy. So I was like, it's Flow Daddy, you know, like or whatever. So yeah, it was just, it just randomly changed one day, but it stuck and it caught like wildfire. And since then it was, it's just a thing. But yeah, it was just a random, literally pick of a name that she came up with. And then I was like, yeah, let's roll with it. And That's funny. Yeah. It's a good, uh, good name to have. I think, uh, a lot of people have definitely, uh, taken to the flow daddy culture and, Oh, yeah. Um, I see a lot of Flow Daddy boards out there. And We've got a whole cult going. Yeah, <laughs> a whole cult. <laughs> uh, definitely a good following, so um, it's cool to see. Um, but yeah, with that, all that being said, we want to say thank you to coming yeah. out and joining us in New York, riding our wave, um, doing this podcast with me, um, and showing a little bit of insight into your background and you know, how you got to this point now. Yeah, and I wanna thank the Flowboard community um, for giving us the time. I want this to be a series that we get a little more insight and a little in-depth look at some of the pro Flowboarders in the industry and um, just hear a little bit of background um, behind how they got to where they, they got to and uh, all the riding involved and all the good stuff in between. So thank yeah. you for coming out. And no, I appreciate y'all having me bring me out here to new york it's been great i enjoy answering all the questions y'all are amazing love all y'all too mm -hmm. um shout out everyone but yeah we'll be back soon thanks for joining us on the first episode of shit flowboarders say if you enjoyed this episode make sure to subscribe for more exclusive interviews with the pros we drop monthly episodes and for our club members they get early access a month before the public release Keep shredding those waves, stay stoked, and catch you on the next shit flowboarder say. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. yeah. the clip. Uh, like, yeah. how long it would be. It would, mm. I don't think. I would just talk it. about it. I'm going to risk it. And I'm then, just then, <laughs> you'll, well, maybe it'll be up there. <laughs> Can you see my muscles? Uh, your elbow's not out of shot, but you can see the muscles. You can? I can see my muscles. Oh my god. This is definitely making me cry. I... Oh, I'm gonna cry. Oh, you're gonna cry. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Alright. Do we, as I was say, yeah, we don't. Please. Or if you think of anything, you know, helpful, like at any point, you just like type it and right, then turn it towards us. Yeah. yeah. Or if you think of a question while I'm talking, you know, anything. Or something funny, you know, make, make us laugh. Yeah. Or if you say, or being too dry. Talk. We can edit my voice out. Can you see my CCS words? I don't even work out. That's crazy. I used to drink protein shakes like crazy. Is that one of the questions? <laughs> That's in there. How many protein shakes a day, actually? Zero. And now, how many gallons of milk? Back in the day, it was a lot. <laughs>